So let's continue our discussion on Galilean transformations. So once again, a Galilean transformation is basically a mathematical way of transforming the quantities that represent objects and events between two different inertial reference frames. Now, in the previous lecture, we were able to show that the equations that describe the transformation of the position of an object between two different reference frames in which one frame is stationary and the second frame is moving with the velocity v in the positive direction along the x-axis is given by these three equations. So basically, if we know the position, the exact position of our object with Thin. the second reference frame that is moving with the velocity v, we can use that to actually find the equivalent position of our object within the first frame that is stationary. So, let's suppose that frame 2 has coordinates x prime, y prime, and z prime, and frame 1 has coordinates x, y, and z. So, if we know x prime, y prime, and z prime, we can use these three equations to calculate what x, y, and z is. So x is given by x prime plus v times t, where v is simply the velocity of the second reference frame, and t is the time that has elapsed. So remember, we assume that initially, before the movement began, the two frames essentially were found at the same exact location. The origin of those two frames exactly coincided. And then, when time began progressing, frame number two began moving in the positive direction along the x-axis. So there was no movement along the z and along the y-axis. So velocity, just like position, can be transformed between two different inertial reference frames. So now let's find the Galilean velocity transformation equations, the transformation equations that will give us the transformation of our velocity between two different reference frames. So, once again, suppose that two frames, frame f and frame f prime, begin at the same position at t equals zero seconds. And as time progresses, reference frame f prime moves to the right along the x-axis with the velocity v, while frame f is stationary. So, to see exactly what's taking place, let's look at the following two dots. Diagram. So, in this diagram, we have time equal in zero seconds, and at that point, these two frames, these two coordinate planes, exactly coincide. So, the origin of frame one lies on the origin of frame two. So, that means x1 and y, or x1 and x2, will lie on top of one another, y1 and y2 will lie on top of one another, and z1 and z2 will also lie on one another. Now, after some time passes, let's suppose at time t2, what happens is the frame given by f is stationary, it stays where it initially began while frame f prime, the second frame essentially is moving to the right along the x-axis with a constant velocity given by v. So this entire frame is moving to the right with a velocity v. Now suppose at the time of t2, a particle that is given by point p, so this is point P, it's a particle and it has a velocity vector in frame given by f prime. So the velocity vector within the frame f prime is given by this equation. So w prime is equal to w prime along the x axis, w prime along the y axis, and w prime along the z axis. So the velocity vector of this particle particle within the second frame f prime is given by this equation. Now, 
What exactly is the definition of velocity? Well, instantaneous velocity is the rate of change of displacement with respect to time. So that means we have the following three equations. So W prime along the X axis is equal to the derivative of X prime with respect to time. Now this is equal to, so W prime in the Y axis is equal to dy prime dt and finally w prime z is equal to dz prime divided by dt. These will become important in just a moment. So now we want to actually use the Galilean transformation equations for position that we saw in the previous diagram. So we want to use these three equations. So remember, we want to determine what the velocity vector is for this particle in reference frame one given by F. So that means we want to find what these three quantities are. So WX, WY, and WZ. So the velocity of the particle within frame F with respect to the x-axis is equal to dx divided by dt. Now if we go back to these equations, what exactly is x with respect to x prime? Well x is equal to x prime plus v multiplied by t. So we replace x with x prime plus v times t. The same thing can be done for these. So wy is equal to dy divided by dt by the definition of instantaneous velocity. And y is equal to y prime and z is equal to z prime. So wy is equal to this and wz is equal to this. Now let's look at the following equation. We can distribute this derivative and we get the following result dx prime dt plus dvt divided by dt. So notice that the t will cancel and we're simply left with v. So wx the velocity of this particle within frame 1 given by f along the x-axis is equal to dx prime dt plus v. So now we have three different equations. So these three different equations basically give us the velocity of our particle p within frame f. So equation 1, equation 2, and equation 3. And these equations are known as as the Galilean velocity transformation equations.